Hey guys, how's it going? Sleeping Hollow here, and we're back with our first video of the year. And today, this being the first video, and also because both these add-ons, you know, are used in the same space, I figured I'd just throw both of them in for one video. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, there's not much to the first add-on, I just find it very incredibly useful, so let's take a look at it real quick. So here is a silencer I've done recently. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. Now... Obviously, I'm going to mess it up because I'm going to just unwrap it real quick. And now what we're going to see is, you know, for the majority of the body, you know, it's not straight. It has this weird stuff going on. So the way we're going to fix this is we're just going to highlight all this, hit N to bring out our menu. And the first add-on we're doing a review on is UV squares. And the name kind of explains pretty much what it does. So if we go ahead and hit uh, two grid by shape. This is pretty much how I had it. Now you can see they're all squared evenly, you know, proportional to their size. Now, completely off topic, but something I did mess up on. Well, I think I messed up on because from what I've read, it's kind of, it's better practice to, you know, split UVs from hard, in hard edges and I didn't do that for my model. But, you know, I figured it's a silencer. It's not going to really be seen up close, so, eh, doesn't matter. But, so what this add-on does, let's get back to the topic. Um, as you can see, it just squares things up just the way you need them. Or if you want to actually be square, squared on gr gr grid, wow, can't talk. Just hit the bottom one to square grid, and you can see they're all perfectly squared. So obviously, this just depends on what you're doing. I just find it a lot, a lot useful, a lot more useful, you know, working on these kind. When you never you have like a cylinder type model, or a cylinder type uh, UV, you need to square up real quick. It really does good effort. You can see with the with the weight. What's that called again? Hold on. <laughs> one second. Stretching has nothing to do with weight. With the stretching, you can see it's not too bad. There's like a, a little lighter blue right there, but that's not even like problematic from what I from what I've learned. But again, in the future, yeah, we'll split them by the hard edges. So in case anyone's thinking that, I know. <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty pretty useful. So there's not much to say. There's a few other options here, as you can see. Like you can rip faces, and boom, done with that. You can rip vertices, boom, done with that. There's just a lot here that you can really do. So you can see right here, you can sort by different axes. I don't even know. I think probably like that. And then you can boom. Or maybe if you want, if it was like closer to the Y, you just hit it. Yeah. So you know, it's not crazy advanced stuff. It's all incredibly simple, but really, like, just just a really easy but useful add-on. Now, for what it does, you know, it, it, depending on who you are, it can seem a little pricey. It is, it's fifteen ninety five on the Blender Marketplace for UV squares. So, you know, it's not, it's not really, it's not cheap, but it's not, like, too expensive. So, just depending on what you need, if you feel like your models, you know, you just need that quick assortment instead of having to manually do it yourself, I think it's worth it. Really easy, really simple. Just a good overall add-on to have around for your UVs. So with that smaller one out of the way, let's get into the bigger one. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and bring back my whole model. Which, if you've seen in the past, was my, the USP I did when I was showing when I was doing the hard ops add-on review. I I have textured it. It is pretty much done. So you can see this. I personally, I think this looks great. I don't think this is put right. I was just kind of messing around with text and substance painter. But you can see. You know, these, this model came out pretty great. Textures and everything. I'm going to hide this because it looks like a mess. So the next add-on we're looking at is UV Packmaster 2. Alright, so UV Packmaster 2. So what is it? Uh, it's basically a better way to pack things. That's <laughs> If I want to keep it simple, it's just an easier way to pack things. So here's, here's a compensator. Let me just hide it real quick. So if we show it up. So this one I unwrapped before getting this add-on. So you can see I did I did these all myself. I just placed them around and then used the blenders, you know, packing islands. So if we if we look around, you know, just unwrap them, pack them. You know, it's it does a decent job. But now let's go ahead and run the packmaster and let's see what that comes up. All right, so quick jump cut right there because I forgot in this blender file I did have heuristic. I 
don't even expect me to pronounce that, but I did have that enabled. And basically what that does is it take it takes the time you put right there, right here, and it takes that many seconds for it to like compute, for your computer to compute and find the best optimal way to pack your materials. So now if we look at it, you know, they're a lot closer. And personally, I think that just looks a lot better. There is a ton of options you can mess with here. It's going to take, it would take a whole long video to go through this. We can see there's pack to others, which is basically if you have two UVs that are basically the same and you want to pack them on top of each other to save space, you can do that. And then you can also over, or lock the overlapping. So if two UVs are overlapping, you want to keep them that way, you just hit that before you pack it. So those are pretty self-explanatory. Um, there is methods of what you want to use to pack it. So you can use the CPU or your graphics card, or sorry. Your, well, what I have here is a GeForce. So you can decide what, what kind of, what device you want to use to, for your packing. Uh, rotation enabled, pretty self-explanatory. If you want the pack master to be able to rotate things for you and you can decide what the rotation step is. So 90 degrees. But, you know, there's not really too, too much to just explain if I want to do this, like, really quick, short thing. But, okay, so let's, well, I'm just going to turn it off. I'm just going to quick pack and see. Boom. Okay, so you can see it's 0 .6, 0 0.697. Now, if we're going to go ahead and enable this again, this time I'm going to hit 5. If My cat will get out of the way so I can, <laughs> he's like, he's actually just came onto my computer and is sitting on my table now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit 5. Pack. You see on the bottom, time left, five seconds, and it's packing different iterations. And there we go, 0. 0.741. So what does this mean for, like, for something like this, it's not really too much, but what if we took it further? So now we're going to go ahead and look at the actual USB, so we'll hide all these. Let's go ahead and look at this. Now you can see there is a lot going on here. So if we want to measure it real quickly, you can see it's 0. 0.654. So let's just go ahead and pack it with blenders with a margin of 0. 0.007. You can see, yeah, look at all that space. It doesn't put things inside of other things that I probably could have. I mean, obviously you could, you know, mess with this and see if you can get a better outcome. But one issue that Blender has with its original packing is it doesn't, figure, hey, you know, maybe something like this could fit right there, you know. It just doesn't do that, which is it, which is a shame, but if we go back undo real quick, you can see that Packmaster has no problem doing that. Any space that's left with the margin you set, it will find space for just, it does a way better job. That's all, I mean, there's not, like I said, I don't, not diving too much into it, just simple review, but this, ha this add-on has been a lifesaver with packing. Obviously I unwrapped the whole thing myself, you know, to the best of my ability. But wow, like <laughs> I don't think there's really much of a comparison to see like how much better it is at packing EVs. So yeah, I think that pretty much does it. Um oh price. <laughs> um for the UV Packmaster, so it comes in two. You can buy the standard edition, which I guess is just like it says standard. Um, or you can get the pro version, which is currently what I have. The standard is twelve dollars, pro is twenty. So you know, depending on what you need, uh, you can read online. Uh, again, link in the description for both of them, so you can see if it's like which one you would rather prefer. So yeah, the standard apparently, according to the website, just has limited features, and obviously a professional has both of them. Uh, there is a table, which again, I'll, I'll also put that in the description, a table to, that kind of shows you what the standard can, can't do versus what the pro can do, such as like U, UDI, UDIM support, the heuristic algorithm, which is what I showed you, the one where you put the seconds. Anyways, uh, I think that pretty much does it. I don't think there's really much to explain. UVs can be a pain, but these two add-ons do a great job of making that pain just, just a little more bearable, you know what I mean? So anyways, that pretty much does it for me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed these two add-ons. Again, if you if UVing isn't your thing, it, well, you still have to personally UV, but if packing and whatnot is not your thing, I would recommend both these add-ons. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.